Now those figures we report on every day are so much more than just numbers. They are people with families and friends who love them. The first coronavirus-related death in Maine was reported on March 27th, a man in his 80s from Cumberland County. The state has not been identifying victims in order to protect their privacy, but families know. Yet they can't hold typical funerals, which can make mourning the loss of a loved one even more difficult. New Center Maine's Vivian Lee is here now to talk about one of those unnamed deaths and tell us how social media is helping change the faceless anonymity of COVID fatalities. Viv? Well, Pat, that's right. Stephanie Orr and her family members are grieving their mother, Pat Tatro. She was one of the first member mayors to die from the virus, and they're doing it in ways that would have been unthinkable just weeks ago. And they want people to know she is so much more than just a number. Stephanie Ord lights up talking about her mother, Pat Tatro. She was very self-sufficient, made us very strong. The Portland native was a trailblazer of her time. She served in the Air Force in the early 1950s at the Pentagon, utilizing skills she learned in the military. Pat worked full time while raising six kids and several foster children through high school. They got married and brought their own children and, and spouses back to mom and they always called her mom. Incredible stories about Pat, a breast cancer survivor and considered the rock of her family that haven't been shared. So many friends and relatives that are just waiting for this celebration of life and we haven't had a chance to talk about it at all. Pat died on March 30th, one of the first COVID-19 related deaths in Maine. The 88 year old was living in a senior housing complex in Westbrook. It all happened so quick that it's pretty stunning, but uh, we went there one day, um, March 18th, to be exact, and there was a sign on the door that said there was an active COVID case in the building and that it was a COVID hotspot. That hotspot was on Pat's floor. Several days later, with a cough she couldn't shake, Pat tested positive and ended up in Mercy Hospital. She passed away from COVID-19 a little more than a week later. In the early days of the virus, Stephanie and her siblings were allowed to say goodbye. I mean, they suited us up in PPE and protected us. Following their mom's death, Stephanie, who lives on the Cape in Massachusetts, and her family members in Maine were immediately quarantined. I can't tell you a worse way to mourn than to spend 14 days completely isolated. Even more devastating, Pat's death was reported as a nameless statistic. A public funeral was not an option during the crisis to remember a woman whose true joy was her family, and that included several great-great-grandchildren. A woman in her 80s, a man in his 70s, whatever, and it's like, oh, well, that must be the one where they counted mom or whatever, and it felt so horrible. After emerging from isolation, someone sent Stephanie this social media page where loved ones can post photos and obituaries of people lost to COVID-19 and celebrate their lives. She was such a dynamic person. Everywhere she went, um, she met people. She made friends so well and so easily. While a public tribute to her mom can't replace a memorial service, daily words of love and comfort is helping Stephanie and her family heal. They're people that are very specific about their comments and it feels like they care. Now, Stephanie's brother, one of her brothers and sister, though, were not able to say goodbye to Pat because they were hospitalized with the virus. They have since recovered. The couple had spent time in that apartment where Pat was living, and that's when they came down with it. Now, we'll have much more information how you can get resources and help, including information about that Facebook page on our webpage and social media app. Back to you, Cindy. All right, Vivian, thank you so much.